And we're going to go around the table. Kirby hit the jackpot with this one. You can go anywhere you want to go. Matt DeBerry is going first. Yeah, I'll start with Jordan Davis then if I get the uh, first nod. Uh, Three-star defensive lineman, big project. Turns out to lead the Redcoat marching band after senior day. That's how much that guy meant to this program. Um, he's an all-timer. An all-timer, three-star defensive lineman, turned first-round pick, national champion, absolute bulldozer in the middle, one of the best Georgia defensive linemen of all time, Ryan. That's my first pick. Well, no, I, Ryan's first. going third. I'm going Ryan's second. going third. You will okay. wait your turn, Ryan Curley. I'm going to throw it to you, Dean. You will wait your turn, Ryan Curley. Uh, I'm actually going to go, and he hit the jackpot. It was his. He was the one who created the atmosphere for it, though. Matt, it was it was the day I still remember where I was when all the guys came back from the sixteen team going into seventeen. That seventeen team is not the same team without Nick, Sony, Lorenzo, Davin, etc. That was the moment where things changed in a definitive way. That went from a, a team that was younger and he and, and and listen, there were a lot of moments in twenty sixteen. The South Carolina game was a great example. I guess the Ole Miss game, but really the South Carolina game going into the half. There were a lot of moments where Kirby Smart was learning how to be a head coach. Like he he saw it, but seeing it and doing it, like it's not the same thing. He had to grow up in 16, but what gave him the pathway to 17 and the Rose Bowl uh, game champ, uh, win, the championship in the SEC, uh, championship game over Auburn, the win at Notre Dame, et cetera, the ability to move from Jacob to Jake with like not a lot of hiccup was all that was that moment in December with all those guys coming back, not just coming back for the Liberty Bowl, but coming back for everything else. So, I mean, to me, that's where Kirby hit the jackpot. Ryan, you're third. You don't have as many options as the rest of us. No, I don't. You're going to go with have, like, McConkie, have, like, You're going to go with he hits you know, the jackpot over and over again. That, that That's kind of what my takeaway was. Um, I'm going to say going and getting Stetson back. That's, that's what I'm going to go with because this that's all doesn't happen the way it does. If they don't do that, recognizing to have a person in the quarterback room that they trust, right? I think more important than anything, that wasn't necessarily about talent and level of play, but about someone that they wanted around. And so like that, he's the, one of the biggest puzzle pieces of this picture the last few years. I'll, I'll, I'll go with going and, and bringing him back in and, and uh, I guess not giving up on him, right? Because I think Stetson at certain points was was getting ready to give up on himself. Well, let me let me clarify the record real quick before I go to Matt. They did give up on Stetson. They 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 literally told him you'll never play here. And then this guy, and then this guy, and then this moment. I mean, did they win the national championship with 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 J T. Daniels as a quarterback, Matt? I don't think it's a certain no. Uh, it, it's possible, but they certainly made the best decision, and Stetson gave them the best opportunity. And I like Ryan's answer because I was going to say that exact same thing. Getting him, bringing him back was huge. Betting on Stetson Bennett turned out big. Um, if we're going to continue rolling right through this, I'm going to say hiring Dan Lanning. I think that guy came from Memphis. Correct. He was a guy that Kirby had his eye on, a tremendous defensive mind, an ace recruiter brought him in um, to be – I think the co-defensive coordinator at the time would then get promoted to D.C. I forgot exactly how so that all Mel, worked out. So Mel Tucker had been hired at, at, at Michigan State. Dan mm -hmm. Lanning came in, I think. Now, I know he was the guy calling the plays against Texas, and I can't remember the trajectory there, but Glenn Schumann was still around, you know, and it no. wasn't Glenn. They didn't bring someone else in. Dan Lanning had been, hi Dan Lanning had been hired, correct? Because Shearer yeah. left. Yeah. What a stepping stone from Memphis to Georgia to being the head coach at Oregon. And I think he's one of the youngest head coaches still out there. Um, what Dan Lanning meant to the program, uh, I think, is more than people realize, I guess. But so that would be mine. Hey, Ryan, do they do they go on to win? What? If George. OK, this is not a trick question. This is like a like you tell me what would have happened. If Georgia wins the national championship in 17, if, if the second and 26 doesn't happen and Alabama can't get out of their own way at the end there and doesn't have a miracle, 
how many national championships does Georgia have? Does that mean more championships for, for the dogs or does that mean fewer? I, I don't really know that it changes that much, to be honest. I, I don't, I think that it just means like that one more for sure. But then you think about 2018, I mean, with Georgia, would they have beaten that Clemson team in 2019? No, I don't was any so. beating that LSU team in 2020? Nobody was beating that Alabama team. I actually don't think it changes that much outside of that one ring. Does Justin Fields being the quarterback in 20 change anything, Matt? I don't, I don't think a Justin Fields, a Georgia-led team in 20 with Justin Fields was going to beat that Alabama team. Okay. Uh, but it could have been a different transition to the next quarterback. So there would we be no – Stetson. Right, right. So it would have jumbled things for the future in a lot of different ways. But I don't think Justin Fields was going to lead 2019 Georgia to a championship or the 2020 Georgia team to a national championship. Would he have? They would have been. They could have been better in theory, but they wouldn't have been the best team in the country. This is a trick question. Was it? Would do you think that Justin would have replaced Jake Fromm in 19 had he stuck around? Because I think he might have. I mean, Jake. Jake went backwards. I think absolutely. I think Justin would have had to have earned it, Ryan, at some point. So I think it's certainly up in the air that could have yeah. happened. As long as he had earned it in practice, I think that that switch definitely would have been possible in 19. But but going back to it, I, I don't think that like the trajectory of the roster would have changed a lot, probably if they won that national championship. But I don't think when you stack them against the other teams, I don't know that they would have had any more rings outside of just that one. And, you know, you got to think about it, Matt. You were there in, in 18 and 19. LSU, like, you know, with Joe, Joe Burrow was a meteor. I mean, like, they're, they if LSU doesn't have him, they don't win the national championship. They don't, they don't, they're not the same thing. And that's, that's what, you know, Nick, in his time at Alabama, he won six in like however many years, six, 15 years. There were times where you tried to avoid meteors and you can't. And it just, wham, you know, they just hit you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And that, that happened more often than not. And I, I think that's the question that Kirby and them will have is how many meteors can they avoid? I mean, we don't know what we don't know about the 24 season. Who's out there that could really, you know, push Georgia off the track um, in that way? That that may be hard to know. I mean, does Ohio State have that kind of, you know, moment in time? Um, but that 20 Alabama team was great. Uh, so it was 19. So it was, you had three national championships, perhaps four in a row, but certainly three in 1920 and 21, where there was something amazing about each of those teams. Yeah. Joe Burrow, Alabama offense, Georgia defense. Yeah. And then you had the Stetson Bennett year, the year after that. I mean, so much to Georgia fans in particular, more than a national kind of spotlight deal. But Ohio State appears to be that type of team to me. Does a team like Ole Miss and Tennessee, do they take a step forward? Do they take a step backward? I feel like I guess they could stay the same where they are, like pretty good but not elite. Does LSU take a step forward? I mean, Brian Kelly's got to be under some pressure at some point to make them competitive on a national level competing for championships. That was a big hire. I mean, that, that was huge. And he is a really good coach. Um, South Carolina is always going to have a really tough schedule. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how these programs do. Texas A&M and at Texas, Oklahoma, there's so many interesting teams and where they are right now in relation to okay. where their coaches are. Yeah, um, but it, specifically, I guess, to the conference. But I guess, yeah, it would be Ohio State and Oregon are the only two that I think could compete with Georgia in that conference. And you, you do not think, Ryan, that anyone in the ACC you, – you don't buy Florida State with DJ on the way? No, is that who it is? I forgot for a second who it was going to be. It's not, or, it's not good that you're forgetting these. Is it not good? Florida State. Where did Cam Ward go? I don't know what happened there. Miami. Man. That's right. Okay. Yeah. There was a second where I was thinking Cam Ward was at Florida State. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, do we I'm not, I'm not, Miami? Yeah. I'm not buying the Big Twelve either. No. So, and I'm not buying the the, the Big Ten completely either. Uh, but, uh, I just. The last few years, it has been like a spe – outside of this past year, it was kind of like a special thing happening each national championship. I mean, do you want to say Michigan's was 
There no, was no, kind of no. a unique championship. But. No, no. I mean, if George had won it in 23, it would not have been a magical. Yeah. Yeah, no, it I mean, would have. Yeah, it would have been very vanilla compared to the other two. For sure. And now but I will say this. It still would have been a, a national championship, but it wouldn't have kind of had the same vibe, I guess. Well, every national championship is not created equally. I mean, like the 15 Alabama team. Like that was probably one of their worst as national championships, but it, you know they still claim it just like they claim the you know nineteen forty three Birmingham Touchdown Club national championship. So it's all it's all relative. But I, I will say this: I do think I do think that the Georgia offense could be like scary good, like approaching the nineteen LSU, approaching the twenty Bama um, in terms of points. Now we'll see, Matt. I don't know. Last comment, Matt. Uh, that's an interesting take and one that I don't think you're super far off from. Right. All right. Thanks for watching y'all. We'll see you on the next videos.